Merry Christmas. Merry Christmas. We are still in the Christmas season. That is right. So we'll give thanks to God and a happy new year to you and to your family as we join together in worship on this, the first Sunday after Christmas. And it's become a tradition here at St. Paul's. It is also our Christmas hymn sing. So I'll give you a little bit more details about that here in a few minutes. Once again, welcome to worship. We're glad you're here in the house of the Lord. A special welcome for visiting with us today. We are glad you're here and hope that you like singing today. So we'll be doing a little bit of that. Just a reminder, tomorrow the church office is closed and there is no church tomorrow as that is our New Year's Day observed. So just a reminder, if you're out and about and we're going to stop by a church office for something that we will most likely not be here. So church office will be closed tomorrow. Also, starting this week on Thursday, Life Light begins. If you have not picked up your Life Light material, that may be picked up outside of the church office. That is ready to go. Also, if you have not already done so, the offering envelopes for 2023 are located on a table next to the nursery. So if you haven't picked those up after worship, make sure you pick up your offering envelopes and also the Life Light material. So those are those announcements. Now a little bit of a, a guidance on what is going to take place today with our hymn sing. You have your order of worship in front of you there. And as you can see, we do have a few standard hymns already in there. We will not be repeating those. So if you request one of those hymns, we're already singing it too bad. So, uh, <laughs> so to knock those out, you will, we will not be repeating Angels from the Realms of Glory. That's going to be our opening hymn. Our sermon hymn is Of the Father's Love Begotten, and our closing hymn is Go Tell It on the Mountain. So those are our standards that we have in place. Now, within the service itself, you see there after the salutation, we are seated and we have a, basically it's a hymn, a reading, hymn, reading. Uh, that kind of is our, our take there. I do have uh, how we go about selecting this. I get to select who gets to select. So <laughs> I do have already prescribed notions of who will be called upon. So uh, you can have your hymn picked and ready to go. Also, with that being said, it needs to be, it can be an Advent hymn. I know you may want to sing an Advent hymn. It could be. So those Advent hymn numbers in your hymnal, and that's also one of the most important rules. It's got to come out of the hymnal. We're not singing White Christmas by Elvis or anything this morning, so sorry about that. But it's got to be in the hymnal. Advent hymns, I include it because of the last one, just in case anyone wants to sing that one. Uh, 331 to 357, because the 357 is O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. Uh, we may or may not sing all verses. It's also dependent upon our musician this morning, our organist. So if Carol says no, we go with what Carol says too. So, <laughs> so we have those are our Advent hymns, Christmas hymns. The section of Christmas hymns in our hymnal is 358 through 393. So you can start looking through there, or if you already know what hymn, Start looking it up and finding it through that. It's 358 to 393, our Christmas hymns. Like I said, uh, most of them there are the three hymns as we go hymn, reading, hymn, reading, hymn, reading. And then after communion, after we have communion and our post-communion collect, we'll remain seated for that. And, and after that collect, we'll have two more Christmas hymns before the benediction and our closing hymn. So that is what we will be doing for our Christmas hymn sing. And it will be fun to see what the Lord has in store for us to sing this day uh, that he has made. Our order of service, though, is as printed in, our, hymn, uh, in our, our worship bulletin. Also, you will need your hymnal for those Christmas hymns that we will sing later on in our service. God's blessings to us as we continue to give him thanks and praise and receive what he has to give to us. We begin our service now with the ring of the bells.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. By what we have done and by what we have left undone, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve and present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake he forgives you all of your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Lord God, you made your beloved Son our Savior subject to the law and caused him to shed his blood on our behalf. Grant us the true circumcision of the Spirit that our hearts may be made pure from all sins. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. So for our first selection, if you are over the age of 80, you laugh, but there's a few of you in here. I know it. So if you are over the age of 80 and you have a Christmas hymn picked out, oh, Pat's already got her hand... <laughs> You had it already picked out ahead of time again, didn't you? You did. All right, so Pat, what, what, what number? Number 370, 370, 370, 370. What child is this? Uh, Carol, how many verses? You th About one and three. One and three. So hymn number 370, what child is this? Verses one and three. <laughs> Test reading for this day is from Numbers chapter 6. The Lord spoke to Moses, saying, 
speak to Aaron and his sons, saying, Thus you shall bless the people of Israel. You shall say to them, The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel, and I will bless them. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our next hymn selection, I am looking for someone under the age of 20. So basically, the children in our congregation, this is your chance. If you would like to have a hymn. I see Georgia. What hymn number would you like, Georgia? You got to say it loud. 363? Is that the right one? Let's find out what Georgia has picked here. 363, Silent Night, Holy Night. I think we can do that. I think we can manage that. All three verses. Let's do all three verses of Silent Night, Holy Night. If you feel up to it, yeah, sure. The epistle reading from Galatians chapter 3. Now before faith came, we were held captive under the law, in prison until the coming faith would be revealed. So then, the law was our guardian until Christ came, in order that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we are no longer under a guardian, for in Christ Jesus you are all sons of God through faith. For as many of you as were baptized into Christ have put on Christ. There is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ Jesus. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. For our next hymn selection, 
if you are currently or have in the past attended a Concordia University system. So this is one of our Concordias uh, or a seminary. So if you have attended a Concordia, so this could be St. Paul, <laughs> Chicago, Seward. Oh, look, I have one. Oh, you, you didn't want to pick one, so shoot. Okay, well, I guess. Did you go to a Concordia, ma'am? You did, okay. What hymn would you like to sing? 364, Away in a Manger. Carol, any, all or just? How about verse one and three? One and three, Away in a Manger, 364, 364, Away in a Manger, verses one and three. We stand in reverence of the gospel. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. And at the end of eight days, when he was circumcised, he was called Jesus, the name given by the angel before he was conceived in the womb. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. We confess together our Christian faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being a one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again, according to the scriptures, and ascended into heaven, and sits at the right hand of the Father, and he will come again with glory to judge both the living and the dead, whose kingdom will have no end. And I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And I believe in one holy Christian and apostolic church, I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated.
Please bow our heads in prayer with me. Lord, may the words of my mouth and meditations of our hearts and minds be acceptable in your sight, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Please be seated. Grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God, the Heavenly Father above, who gives us every good and perfect gift. Amen. What's in a name? A lot of us don't even know what our name means. Uh, I know what my name means. It's gift from God. <laughs> you laugh, but it is. That's what it is. Matthew actually means gift from God. But, uh, it's always neat, though, to know what's in a name and also to know how to spell your name. Uh, hopefully you know how to spell your name, uh, especially when a, a child begins to learn how to read or write. One of the first things they do, they're taught, it's their name. And how thrilling it is when you see that child identify the letters that make up their name. And then when they're able to write out their own name for the first time and you can kind of really put it together and see it, it's so exciting and just so joy-filled to see a child write out their name and to see that. Maybe you remember writing out your name or seeing your child or grandchild write out their name early on in life. The pure joy it brings to their and your faces. They identify the letters when they write it all out, following by seeing it and putting it all together of what they have just accomplished. All because of a name. Our names are important to us. They give us an identity. Let's people know what to call us. Whether we're standing at line in the BMV, whether we're in a doctor's office waiting room or a restaurant, knowing our name definitely helps. And what if we take our name for granted, take our identity for granted? Like you forgot to write your name at the top of the page of one of the papers that you had to turn in in school on a quiz or a worksheet. You've just totally forgot about it. Ugh doesn't turn out good. Or what if you overlook signing your name at the bottom of that check or bill? And either the bank or the restaurant's going to be coming after you. All because you forgot how important your name is. There are other times when we confuse our identity or we just let it blend into other aspects of our life. But Paul, in our epistle reading for this morning, he's writing against that notion of forgetting our identity. He also is writing that you know your identity. Your identity is in Christ. That's who you are. You are in Christ. For Christ is in you. Christ is on you. Christ has put his name on you. It's like any other part of us or any other thing given to us. We bear the name of Christ. Instead of bearing Christ's name, though, look at how we live our lives. Do we live them like Christ? Do we live them as true Christian? Is that how we live? Is Christ's name upon us wherever we go, whatever we may be doing? Is it our whole philosophy? Is it our culture? Is it our attitude? Is that who we are? We are Christ. Sadly, we have forgotten it. We have ignored it. We have just let it be another name. But we are Christ. We are his own. We are his people. We bear his name. Paul would go on to write about, for there is neither Jew nor Greek, there is neither slave nor free, there is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. You are Christ. Your identity is in Christ. Your name is in Christ. That's who you are. Now, it's important to note at this point that in our world today, our world will take this text and they'll twist it, they'll use it to further one's argument within the gender wars, within the culture wars. But that is taking this verse out of context when one fails to see and understand who you first are and who you will always be. You are Christ. And thanks be to God that we cannot forget that identity. Our name, 
Our name, because of holy baptism, our name, because our Lord and Savior washed us in water and the word, our name, from that moment on, even through death, will be Christ. That's why you are called Christian. You are Christ. For as many of you who were baptized into Christ have put on Christ, So whatever we do, however we go about living, it should be in the light of what and who we are, by what was given to us in faith, by that faith that was placed upon us in our baptisms, that faith that was given to us that makes us sons and daughters of the Most High. For God, God sees us not as what we want to be or who we want to be, But God sees us as his own children because God sees us through the lens of his own. He sees us through that one and only Son, Jesus Christ. God sees you for who you are. He sees you as Christ. For what was given to the people by Moses to give to Aaron and the Levites to proclaim continues to be impressed upon us this day from our Old Testament reading for this morning. So shall they put my name upon the people of Israel and I will bless them. Number 627. And that name of the Lord has been put upon you. That name of the Lord God has been put upon you time and time again, reminding you who you are. Christ, Christ's name has been put on you. You have that baptism. You have that grace. You live in that mercy. You are Christ's brothers and sisters. And if you are Christ, then you are Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise, declares Paul. This is the good news that we are in Christ. We have put on Christ. And now, throughout our life, we live in Christ. Think about it. Typically, the last thing that is spoken to you before you leave those doors and go back into your cars, go back to your places of home, go back into your work, wherever you may go, one of the last things that is spoken here in this place to you are those words from the Old Testament, the Aaronic benediction, the Aaronic blessing, reminding you as you go out through those doors, you are blessed. Blessed because you bear the name of the Lord. Blessed because you are Christ. You are his own people. You are the ones who he gave himself up for. For the Lord blesses you and keeps you in his loving care. The Lord stands up for you. This is his countenance for you. He gives you a peace that this world cannot give. You go in the name of the Lord. You go because you are Christ. It's in our name. Christian. We are Christians in this world. We are Christ bearers. For we continue to stand in what Christ has accomplished for us and to us yet this very day. We, brothers and sisters, we stand in that undeserved grace showered upon us each and every day of our lives as we wake up mindful that we are baptized into Christ. We are Christ. We stand in that sacrifice shown for us through the perfect life, the innocent suffering, the horrific death, and the glorious resurrection of Jesus Christ our Lord. We stand together not as what our surnames may be, but we stand in the name of Christ our Lord who unites us together as one body as he is our head. We are united as one family all because of the name that we share. We are in Christ because that name, that name Christ, leads us back to Jesus. Our gospel ring for today, pretty long one, right? Maybe you can memorize that one, that whole one verse, gospel according to St. Luke, one verse. 
But it's that one verse that's so important because it shows that God's ultimate plan was fulfilled. After eight days, Mary and Joseph went to have their newborn circumcised to offer the appropriate sacrifice there in the temple. And they did not forget that name that was given to them before that child's birth, that name that as they would go to the temple would be that child's name for the rest of his life. And that name that they gave, that name that they declared, that they gave to their son, his name would be to call him Jesus. For he would save his people from their sins. He would save you and me. He would save the entire world from all of our sin, from our times of neglect, our times of forgetfulness, our times of not bearing that name of Jesus Christ. He, he would bear that. He would take it to the cross so that we would be saved from our sin. For Jesus, Yeshua, is a name that is attached to Christ because he would be the promised Messiah from of old, who would take away the sin of the people, who would be the one who has come to save. And that's exactly what was in Jesus' name, and that's exactly what he did. Jesus Christ, the one who saves, the promised Messiah. And that's exactly what he has done. He has taken away your sin. He has taken away my sin. He has taken away the sin of the whole world. And he has saved us, freed us from that imprisonment of the law that holds us captive by he fulfilled what we cannot. For Jesus Christ, he is the one who fulfilled God's ultimate plan of salvation. Jesus Christ, he is the one and only one who did what no other person could do. Save the world. So when we hear of those names and those titles of Christmas, Christian, what's in the name? Everything. Because they bring us back to Jesus. When we hear of his name, when we read his word, it brings us joy because we know what that name has done for us. That name, Jesus Christ, has won for us forgiveness. That name, Jesus Christ, has freely given to us eternal life. Remember that name, Jesus Christ, for he has saved his people. Remember that name, Jesus Christ, because it is what he has put on all of you. For therefore God has highly exalted him. He has bestowed upon him the name that is above every name, so that at the name of Jesus every knee should bow in heaven and on earth and under the earth, and every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Thanks be to God. This is the name that our lips bear, that we speak of and that we proclaim each and every day of our lives and that gives to us a peace and a joy which this world cannot take away we bear jesus christ because christ has been put on you christ is with you always amen now the peace that passes our human understanding keep our hearts and minds in that name the name that is above every name Jesus Christ, our Lord, in his name, amen. As our offerings are brought forward at this time, we continue with our offertory hymn, We Praise You, O God, on page five in our bulletin.
Please stand for prayer. O Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. The heavens are the work of your fingers, and yet you will to save us in the most humble and sacrificial of ways. Already eight days after being born of the Virgin Mary, your Son was at work for our salvation by fulfilling your law and shedding his blood. Receive our heartfelt thanks for the righteousness and forgiveness of sins, which we have obtained through Jesus' life, death, and resurrection. Lord, in your mercy, Blessed God, you sent your Son into our flesh, and as an infant he first shed the blood that would cleanse us from our sin. Accept our thanks for the loving kindness shown to us sinners. Grant Pastor Lou and Michelle on the Chinese mission, Pastor Paul and family, and Brian and Barb Sorge a steadfast faith as they proclaim your love, that all who hear would not forget all of your benefits or lose sight of your promises. Lord, in your mercy, O oh God, you declare that in Christ Jesus there is neither Jew nor Greek, slave nor free, male nor female, for we are all one in him. Preserve us from all ungodly prejudice, yet instill, instill in us a deep appreciation of our distinctive callings. Grant the people of St. Paul's, those not in attendance with us, and especially Trina Radel, Christopher Ream, Debbie Ream, Kareen and Kyler Rooksberry, and Donna Rothert, they would not resent what you have called us to be and to do, but rejoice to serve you as you have ordained. Lord, in your mercy, yeah. blessed Lord, you have shown your power by establishing governments and leaders to serve your people in your name. Grant to our president, governor, congress, legislatures, judges, and magistrates the wisdom and courage to act with integrity on behalf of all people, especially those least able to defend themselves. Lord, in your mercy, Father in heaven, bless and keep us by your grace. Remember those in need who cry out to you, especially Bob Grant, Frank Reichowicz, John Woodson, Carol Stevens, Bob Hartman, Becca Anderson, Caleb Spicer, Mark Kell, Ruth Bashir, Carolyn Sparks, Bob Hoffman, Jeff Kachanik, Darlene Hatfield, Barbara Miller, Mike Reber, Kathy Phillips, Jim Lance, Dale Horn, Alan Goldie, Diana Schwark, Julie Causey, Clifford McMiller, Jane Luttrell, and Dixie Lunkenheimer. According to your will and wisdom, lift up your contents upon them and give them peace. Also be with those who mourn the loss of a loved one this day. Be with the family and friends of Joella Sutton after her death, with Jean Pogue and family after the death of her mother, Joan Farmer, with Sandy Alt and family after the death of her brother, Michael Cantor. Grant them comfort and hope in the days ahead as they look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life everlasting won for us by our Savior. Lord, in your mercy. Amen. Holy God, you call us to be a family in Christ. We thank you for the love shown to husbands and wives if you have united them together in holy matrimony. Continue to be with those couples who celebrate wedding anniversaries this week. Sean and Lexi Williams, Josh and Tina Fuhrer, Brad and Candy Biggs. Give them your Holy Spirit. Strengthen their relationship to show forth your love. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious Father, in your steadfast love, you have put off the days of Jesus' return until that perfect time when the number of your elect, elect is complete. Keep your people watchful, vigilant, and awake with your gift of faith until that day. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that, seeing you in the person of your Son, we may know and love those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels, with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing.
Blessed are you, Lord of heaven and earth, for you have had mercy on those whom you created and sent your only begotten Son into our flesh to bear our sin and to be our Savior. With repentant joy, we receive the salvation accomplished for us by the all-availing sacrifice of his body and his blood on the cross. Gathered in the name and in the remembrance of Jesus, we beg you, O Lord, to forgive, renew, and strengthen us with your word and spirit. Grant us faithfully to eat his body and drink his blood as he bids us to do in his own testament. Gather us together, we pray, for the ends of the earth to celebrate with all the faithful the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Graciously receive our prayers, deliver and preserve us. To you alone, O Father, be all glory, honor and worship with the Son and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the night when she was betrayed, took bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and eat, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us with this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us to the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Please be seated. You know, I kind of feel bad that I left most of you out of that last one of uh, you had to graduate from a Concordia. So I'm going to switch it up for this one. For our uh, Christmas hymn, if you have graduated from USI, UE, IU, Purdue, pretty much if you graduated from a higher learning institution in the state of Indiana. So is anyone out there who would like to have a hymn sung for graduated from any of those schools? Pretty much if you graduate from Indiana. <laughs> Greg, Greg, what's, what's number? Joy to the world. Well, now you got to say a number to that now. <laughs> 387. Something tells me my son wanted to sing that too, I guess. So 387, Joy to the World. Joy to the World. Carol, we want to do... Uh, how, can, we, can we do one, three, and four? One, three, and four. Let's do Joy to the World, one, three, and four, hymn number 387. For our last hymn sing selection, if you had a white Christmas, so if there was snow on the ground wherever you were at, why do both of my kids' hands this? Sh <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, Colin. I'm gonna we we'll sing some other time. Colin, what song you got? Three fifty six. Oh, we're going into Advent. Ooh. Uh, the angel Gabriel from heaven came. Is that it? Yes. All right. The angel Gabriel from heaven came. So which verses would you like to sing, Carol? Want to do one and four? That would be fine. One and four. Well, it's up to you. You're playing. <laughs> so, what do you... Well, how about one, three, and four? One, three, and four. That's fine with me. One, three, and four.
Please stand for the benediction. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with his favor and give you his peace. Amen. Amen.